Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to use uh, some multi-phase flow models inside ANSYS Fluent, and uh, for that reason, I'm planning to simulate a pressure-driven cavitating flow of water uh, through a sharp orifice. So, if we quickly look at the problem description, here is the problem. Uh, the flow is coming from left to right. The flow is actually water in the beginning, but after some distance from the inlet. Uh, you see that uh, um, the geometry is experiencing a sudden change in diameter and I would expect to see a, a sudden pressure drop as well inside the orifice so this pressure drop uh, perhaps causes some uh, cavitation inside the orifice so we are going to simulate this uh, problem and see how the cavitation is developed inside the orifice so if I go back to my <coughs> ANSYS Fluent Workbench I have already created the mesh and the geometry so I'll just click double click on setup uh, I'm, I'm going to put these files on Dropbox so that you can download it and uh, use it in this uh, tutorial as well so I'll uh, put the double precision on dimension is 2D and I press OK so first thing I need to do is to load the mesh I'll go to import and then mesh my mesh is located on my desktop go on tutorial case modeling cavitation and here is my mesh so you see that the mesh and geometry is now loaded so the mesh is a little bit finer toward uh, when it comes to uh, orifice so let's start with the general setting first. So the, the, the solver type is pressure based, um, 2D space is axis symmetric as I said, and for for the moment um, I would I would like to run a steady state case. So I'll start with multiphase. I'll put the model of multiphase flow model to mixture. The number of Eulerian phases are two. One is water and the other one is uh, vapor. So since I'm expecting the velocities, um, since I'm expecting the, the bubbles uh, are running with the same speed as the fluid, I can at this stage neglect the slip velocity, so I just turn this off and I press OK. So for the viscous model, I'll use K epsilon model, realizable, and with enhanced wall treatment, I press OK as well. So for the material, I double click on the air, so I will pick the water with density of 1000 and the viscosity of 1e-3 e and change create. I'll close this, I need another f uh, material which is my water vapor so I have already have it in my fluent database I double click on that and uh, I press copy but I would like to change the density and the, and the viscosity so my viscosity is and uh, density was 0 0.025558 and the, the viscosity is 1.26 e to the power minus 6 change create and I will close it so this one I will delete now so if I come to the model multi-phase flow as I said the multi-phase flow model is set to make sure with, two, with the number of Eulerian phase to 2 and when it comes to phases I will list show all so my primary phase I double click on that is water I would call the phase one water and then my secondary phase would be water vapor and I call it vapor press OK and then close uh, what else I need to change here um, okay so when it comes to the boundary condition 
the inlet I'll double click on the inlet <clears throat> so since this is a pressure driven uh, simulation uh, I have put the inlet 1 and inlet 2 so I have two inlets I have to mention that one, one inlet is from here to here and inlet 2 is from here to here so that's why I have inlet 1 and inlet 2 so if I click on the inlet 1 again I put uh, gauge total pressure to 5 bar and this supersonic initial gauge pressure I will put it to 44500 Pascal um, this is actually this the first one is gauge total pressure which means it consists of uh, both static pressure and uh, and the, the the pressure due to the velocity which is a total pressure but when it comes to the supersonic or initial gauge pressure it's basically the static pressure and uh, if the problem is um, compressible if your fluid flow is compressible uh, then this supersonic velocity uh, this supersonic pressure actually helps to find the initial velocity at the inlet so when are you when you are going to initialize your solution and use this supersonic initial gauge pressure um, uh, the fluent uses this one and uh, calculate the initial velocity at the inlet so I will, I will try to explain this in my blog that I'm going to put the link uh, under this YouTube video and perhaps that would help you a little bit to understand uh, this one a little bit further uh, for the turbulence method I will go for K and Epsilon I would be happy with uh, 0 0.02 for the turbulent kinetic energy and uh, turbulent dissipation rate of 1 I'll keep it as it is and then I'll copy the same thing for inlet 2 so same initial same uh, boundary condition for inlet 2 press ok <clears throat> for the outlet uh, put the gauge pressure to something a little bit lower than one bar um, yeah 9500 pascal oh. 95000 pascal and uh, the same k and epsilon model as for the inlet this one should be closed now uh, make sure make sure that the vapor the vapor um, volume fraction is set to zero for both inlet and outlet this one is zero as well that's good and then the operating condition I would like to put it to zero okay uh, okay so I've forgotten to set the interactions as well so it, since you have two faces I would like to have this number of transfer of mechanism to one press the warnings okay um, so from phase 1 to phase 2 which is vapor I would like to have this interaction of cavitation so you see here you have this cavitation model models you have two cavitation models but I'll keep the default as it is but this vaporization, vaporization, uh, vaporization pressure uh, I'll put to 3540 as a constant value which means that if the pressure at a temperature of 300 kelvins goes lower than this value then the water will go into vapor so this is your cavitation or vaporization pressure so I'll press OK now I'm happy with this one as well so boundary condition is done and then the method solution and method so I'll use uh, coupled Presto for pressure, volume fraction I will go for quick and then quick for quick for uh, quick for momentum as well. 
then monitors residual we'll add two more zeros I'll change for all of them I press OK make sure that the plot is on and uh, now it comes to initialization I'll go for hybrid initialization and then here I would use specific use a specified initial pressure and inlets so that's what I was talking about so if you use this one then then ANSYS Fluent will use uh, those super those uh, supersonic initial gauge pressure to calculate the velocity in the inlet uh, so I press OK run calculation uh, um, let's use this pseudo transient and have this high order term relaxation on as well so now I would like to control the solution I would like to control the volume fraction on the relaxation to 0.3 okay now I'm I would be ready to start I would run for 400 and the uh, solution must be initialized so I think I need to initialize it again since I changed something there okay initialize it again and then I would run the calculation for 400 iterations so this is not a heavy simulation uh, hopefully this will be quick <clears throat> so you see the continuity velocities epsilon and volume fractions are converging quite rapidly so it's already okay now it's converged calculation complete I'll go to post-processing I'll show you some contour plots for example the pressure first uh, I use this option field save display so here you see that the pressure that you had in the inlet something like 55 bar or 5.5 bar yeah it was 5.5 bar so it's experiencing a sudden change a uh, sudden drop when it comes to the orifice so I would expect the cavitation will start from this sharp edge because uh, as you see the pressure is uh, somehow lower than the cavitation uh, pressure of uh, or the pressurization vaporization pressure of the the water so if I go back to the contour make a new one and in this time I go for faces and then the volume fraction I use fill instead of water I'll go for vapor and here is here it is so you see there is almost no vapor here but uh, right in the corner the vapor is started to create it this is the obvious cavitation problem and you see that the cavitation is uh, actually transported with the main flow in the orifice downstream uh, perhaps it would be interesting to show the contour plots of turbulence uh, and the turbulent kinetic energy uh, if I press a field so you see that uh, it's very interesting that, that the high turbulence intensity is actually created or coincide with the area that you have this uh, <clears throat> uh, cavitation so this high turbulence intensity actually um, does not allow the bubbles to grow much uh, bigger and um, since you have a turbulent flow it, it, uh, it crashes or it, um, it destroys the bubble and it does not allow the bubbles to grow uh, bigger and you saw it actually in the picture in the contour plots of the cavitation flow or the, the void fraction or the volume fraction of the vapor so I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and you have learned something from this tutorial. I'm going to
put some comments on my blog don't forget to subscribe to to my youtube uh, video uh, my youtube channel and like my videos thank you bye bye